I thought the shirt was going to be way too blue for this, but it actually seemed to be perfectly fine. So, blue screen, no problem. Did y'all know bees can't fly in the dark? Has nothing to do with this video. I just thought that was a fun fact for y'all to know. Anyways, during COVID and during my most recent injury where I've been having to stay home, um, I have been a fan of watching film. I always have, but I found probably the best movie ever. We've all seen Velocipaster. We've all seen Sofa Killer which feel like deviations of the human centipede, which again, I might be psychopathic, but it's a funny movie to me. But I found one that only has 357 reviews as of recording this on IMDb. That movie is called <laughs> The Thingy. It's also well known for The Confessions of a Teenage Placenta, which is so much to unpack. I haven't seen a movie that has been the funniest, creepiest, downright stupid, and probably sometimes one of the best filmed movies I've seen in a good while. Is this by any means a good movie? Absolutely not. It is, it is student film at best, but because of that, I love it even more. The description for this movie, which by the way, I should mention, doesn't give you any information about the movie itself. It gives you a very broad, broad description. The heartbreaking story of a living placenta is raised a human, a Christian, and a soldier. Oh my god, this video is going to be so much fun. I just watched the trailer to prepare for this, and I am not prepared for this. I don't even know where to begin. The trailer opens up as if it's a cringy horror movie. Which it's not. Um, I guess you could take it that way in the sense that a meaty flesh pancake is roombaying around the... This is the hardest movie it was for me to watch. Because uh, the first time I watched it, I only got 30 minutes into it and I could not watch anymore. Not because it was disturbing, not because the movie was lacking of anything. It was just so much that my brain would not function to comprehend any of the things that were happening in the movie. This movie has left me speechless. Without watching the movie again, I cannot remember the name of the main character, which I I can only imagine it was John, because this movie has a, for some reason, heavy Christian presence. So John, or at least that's what I'm going to name him, because I can't for the life of me find where his name was, and I don't want to watch the entire f movie again. John was born an abnormal human. Where he was born was in a gym. Second thing, mom is played by Pascal Mentez. Pascal Mentez is this man right here. Do you recognize him? Nope, because nobody does, but he's in this movie. He is born while his mother is giving an arm wrestling match, which that, by the way, subtle, but funny. It's going to take forever. It's going to take such a long video. So the next thing that happens is you see the baby is born. I'm not going to show that because it's disturbing. So he's born and the baby is just thrown into like a sack that was the move that made lebron cry okay so the next part that i can remember is they're at home and john the placenta flesh pancake patty thing is watching army movies because his father used to be in the army um and then it cuts to his mother who is unpacking a ammo box full of memorabilia and everything <coughs> And I'm pretty sure then it cuts to her doing steroids to keep that roid arm growing and raging. So John, he's just growing up and, you know, like I said, coming of age movie. He's growing up. He's going to school. He feels like an outcast. Right, you know. Please keep it silent during the movie. Yeah. Which I could see why. I, I don't even remember. I gotta, I gotta go through this movie. We're then shown into his high school years. And, you know, it's like classic high school years because teenagers come on move it you freak it's not his fault why don't you take on someone of your own size no i just move over him what's funny though is the fact that since he does not have legs and it's a little bit difficult for him to waddle they get him <laughs> that which he can roll around in there are some awkward scenes which i'm not going to show where he gets aroused at the other students which is just again coming of age movie i get it little creepy but i get it he then 
gets caught into the bathroom by this bully in this scene. This scene, he beats the out of him. Um, like, violently beats the shit out of him. Of yours? Bumper full of enzymes, vitamins, some amino acids. Is that what you're after? Sodomizing her to nourish her? It's because he liked a girl. I don't remember that in high school, but... <laughs> You know, whatever, sure. But I'm gonna skip to probably the next best scene. Luke goes on a date. This girl that he's on a date with is like the high school hottie. So everybody wants to be with her, but she doesn't want to be with anyone else. She asks him to go to the restroom with him. She comes out of the bathroom. She asks Luke to kiss him. And this results into her kissing Luke, which has the most disgusting wet noise. And then she proceeds to bite him. Okay, so after being bit by his date, he waddles home. He is met again with the street bums. Harry and Bill tell Luke about his father and his father passing. This prompts Luke to go find the army box that his mother had been looking at in the beginning of the movie. The stuff inside of the box was stuff about his dad, his long lost father. He finds out that his dad died and that he's been dead and that his mom has been lying to him about being dead all this time. He mentions the fact that his dad actually ended up killing two other officers and his mom defends him saying he went out like a kamikaze whenever he died in a car accident killing two, a general and another officer. Luke then thuds off of the seat that he was sitting on and then walks out like a Roomba taking a piece of poop across a tile floor. What would be the most reasonable option that you would do if you were a mother in this scenario? I can tell you this, you're not ready for it. His mother, his mother calls him a prostitute. His mother tells the prostitute to go wait in Luke's room. And then Luke comes home and meets her. Does he have a loving relationship with this prostitute? Not yet. He shows her all the little cutouts that he's done and it has this in like a baseball card like uh, folder. I think that they end up making out, which again, not going to show because... So then it cuts to a scene where he is talking to the priest. He's in a confession booth and he's just like telling him about the fact that's like, yes, I slept with a prostitute. And then, yes, I went on a date, but she bit me. To which he responds with... I don't even, I don't even, you know what? I'm gonna leave that one be. Luke goes home and finds that his mother is overdosing on steroids. And there is like about 12 needles in his mother's arm. And then cuts to a burger place named adequately Burger Holocaust. Because what do you expect from this movie? You know, he, he's now working for Burger Holocaust so that he can make money because his mother lost her arm due to all of the usage of steroids. So no more roid arm. And I have to actually kind of address some of these scenes in this movie are shot so well and yet they picked this movie. Good lord. This shot where it's just a pan back is such a good shot. But then it's followed up with this and I... What? <laughs> Luke is bathing his mother. Okay, so now... This is where the movie starts kind of taking a very, very dark turn. So Luke begins to go through the army box of stuff that was from his father. He finds, you know, pills, other army stuff, rubs some pesto under his eyes, grabs a gun, and goes and proceeds to mercy kill his mother, to put it lightly. Pow. That is now followed unprompted to him sliding into a hospital, finding a nurse, shooting the nurse in the knee, and then finishing off the nurse. And this this part is the one part that I actually had a little bit of an issue watching because it felt really wrong. And it still is, don't get me wrong. He opens the door to the maternity ward and begins to unload the pistol onto seven babies. Is that incredibly dark? Absolutely. Is it messed up? Very much so. 
But to summarize this, Luke was cruising down the street in his 6'4", killing some babies, capping some hoes. So after that scene, it cuts to a news footage reel of the murder that Luke had just committed. And then we pan to see the priest. Luke comes in, the priest sits Luke onto the table and proceeds to deliver the lines. You made him die for your sins, as if you think of yourself as a sort of modern day messiah. And then he takes a bite of Luke. And that's how the movie ends. There's nothing after that movie. That's literally just how the movie ends. It just ends dead stop right there. He takes a bite out of Luke and that's it. So this movie, while a fever dream at least, is probably one of my favorite indie movies. Um, there is a lot of other movies I want to cover. I wanted to cover this one first because I definitely feel like it should get some recognition. Um, again, only 357 reviews on IMDb. Let's... Let's try to up that up, please. Does this movie make sense? No. Is a good coming-of-age movie and explain perfectly why societal reasons brings up bad things? I also don't think I can say yes to that, but, you know, it's a good movie. There's shots that are so beautiful in this movie. It feels like an indie movie film or a, a student film got an ape for it. There are things that are so good with this movie, and then there are things that are just so funny and stupid that I cherish it. If y'all get the chance to watch this movie, absolutely. If I had to rate it 4.5 meatballs out of 10, it's a good movie. Is it a bit awkward? Absolutely. Is that awkwardness added to its quality? 100% and I would not take it back. Um, I definitely recommend you go watch the movies. If y'all have any questions or have any other suggestions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below so I can see what other movies I can review and have a good night.